Good evening, Creed. Welcome once again to the Mystery Playhouse. Tonight our stage has been taken over by The Crime Photographer, written by Alonzo Dean Cole, and based on the fictional character of Flash Gun Casey, created by George Horman Cox, and played by Stat Cotsworth. Casey, ace cameraman of the Morning Express, covers the crime news of a great city. His adventure for tonight, The Reunion. <laughs> Nine o'clock in the evening. A luxurious suite in our city's most expensive hotel. One of its present occupants is a strikingly beautiful woman. In her hands is the latest fashion magazine, but she stares at it without interest. Irene. Irene. Yes, Ruth. You haven't turned a page in that magazine for half an hour. I've been thinking. Oh, Irene, why don't you put him out of your mind? If a man had done to you what my husband has tried to do to me, could you drive it from your mind? Oh, yes, I know. I made Kurt a success. He was just a poor weakling when I met him. I made him a great sculptor. I made him rich and famous. Now he's repaid me. But he's not going to get away with it. Your lawyers will see to that, Irene. They told you they can nullify that divorce Kurt got from you. When I think of the rottenness of oh, it, I don't anymore. Ruth, when you and I were in South America, yes. Mr. Kurt persuaded me to take for my help. Mm-hmm. All the while, he was establishing residence out of this state to divorce me for abandonment. Then when we came home four days ago, we find he's been granted his divorce. Oh, and was just... rotten, dear, so <laughs> rotten. And he was preparing to marry another woman. That Bixby woman was so contemptible. Still say, loathe them. Oh, when I think of it, I... I want to kill him. I don't want to kill him, Ruth. I want to keep him. Keep him? Yes. What? No other woman's going to have him. Tomorrow, I'm going to sign the papers for the nullification of the divorce, and I... <sighs> Will you answer that, Ruth? Oh, certainly. Hey, I'm not here. All right. Hello? Mrs. Walter isn't here. I'm Miss Chandler, her cousin. Who is this? Hold the line a minute. It's a man, Irene. He insists that he's got to talk to you. Who is he? His, his voice sounds a little like your husband. Kurt? Yes. All right. Here. Yeah. Hello, this is Mrs. Walter. Oh. I... All right, wait a minute. Ruth, will you please go into the bedroom and shut the door? Well, well, yes, of course. Don't be angry with me. I'll I'll tell you all about it later. Hello? (laughs) Oh, Ruth, forgive me for sending you out of the room. I mean... I'm going out. You've got to help me dress in the prettiest things I have. Thank heaven my hair was decently done today. Say, what is this? Was it Kurt? No, no, it wasn't Kurt. Uh, darling, hand me that cold cream jar. Here. What other man is making you dress in your best? And... Uh, 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 you seem completely since that telephone call I mean. Well, you'll just have to restrain your curiosity. <laughs> and for several days, I don't expect to come back here tonight or tomorrow night. What? Maybe I won't come back for a week. Why? But don't worry, Ruth, and don't try to find me. I'm going to be happy again, dear. Altogether happy. Oh, uh, what is it? Uh, hello? Hey, this is Anne. Who? Anne, Anne Williams. Uh, nobody but that name here. You got the wrong number. Hey, Goodbye. hey, wait a minute. Wait uh, a minute. What? Uh-huh. Wait. Annie, huh? Now he knows. Uh, what's the big idea of phoning at this hour? Right, Donald. Listen, you've heard me speak of Ruth Chandler. Uh, have I? Yes, you have. She went to college. And she's a cousin of the rich and very beautiful Mrs. Kurt Volkman. You mean the wife of the big sculptor? Indeed, I do. Now, listen, Ruth phoned me a few minutes ago and told me that Mrs. Volkman disappeared ten days ago and has not been heard from since. Yeah? Yes. Ruth hasn't notified the cops yet, so we're getting first in on what may be a good story. Well, give me all the dope, Annie. Well, let me give you. Ruth will tell us the story as soon as we get to the hotel. Oh, okay, Annie. I'll pick you up in about 20 minutes. <laughs> Irene left this 
appointment on Friday night, ten days ago, at about ten o'clock. And that's the last I've seen or heard from her. Uh, yes, but Ruth, listen, Mrs. Balter told you that she might be away for a week. Now, maybe she's just staying wherever she is a little longer than she intended. But she's not where I thought she was going, then. Uh, Miss Chandler, you figured that Mrs. Balter was joining her husband for a reunion. It was the only thing I could figure, Mr. Casey. Until just before I phoned you this morning, I learned there hasn't been any reunion. You went to Walter's home? Yes. I talked to Mrs. Royce, his housekeeper. She told me that during the past ten days, Kurt has been working almost constantly in his studio. It's... It's attached to the house. And that Irene hasn't been there. Sure she told you the truth? Oh, positive. She and I are old friends. She wouldn't lie to me. Mr. Casey, do you think I should ask the, the police to, to look for Irene? No, I wouldn't. You know how women feel who've just been separated from their husbands. Maybe mm-hmm. she just... Well, she, she might be. But say, is this photograph on the piano a picture of your cousin? It is. Mm-hmm. This was taken some time ago. About 15 years ago, soon after her marriage, at the time she was posing for the statue that made her husband famous. The sleeping goddess? You know about it. Yeah. I've seen copies of the original. I oh. kind of like sculptures and paintings. So Mrs. Walter modeled for it. Eh? Yes. Mm-hmm. Annie, this face isn't just beautiful. It's got power in it, real power. It has that on No right. photograph can do Irene cruel justice. She has the most wonderful hair, Mr. Casey. True golden hair. Yes, Anne told me about that. And I've seen Kirk go into temperamental rages because he's a sculptor and not a painter. He, he couldn't reproduce her hair in bronze or marble, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, Miss Chandler, when you talked to his housekeeper this morning, did you ask her where Walter was on the Friday night your cousin left here? Uh, Mrs. Royce remembered that he'd worked in his studio all that night uh-huh. until about 8 o'clock in the morning. He was doing some noisy construction work on a mole. Well, did she see him working there? No. He never permits anyone in the studio when he's working. Well, then he could have gone out for a while. Mr. Casey, I believe you have the same awful idea that I have. That Kurt might have slipped out of the studio unseen, met Irene somewhere, and... and killed her. Did you let this Mrs. Royce know of your suspicions? No. I even asked her not to tell anybody that I'd been out to see her this morning. I don't know why. I I just did. Good. I'd like to talk to Walter. Before he knows a search has been started for Mrs. Walter, I just might catch him off guard. Just might. Well, let's go, Annie. <laughs> Walter will see you and this lady, Mr. Casey. He's in his studio. Please come this way. Oh, thank you. You're Mrs. Royce, aren't you? Yes. How did you know my name? Oh, Ruth Chandler told us all about you. Here we are. Come in. The lady and gentleman from the Morning Express, Mr. Walter. Miss Williams and Mr. Casey. Ah, it's a great pleasure to know you. How do you do, Mr. Mr. Walter? Mr. Walter, it was nice of you to let us barge in on you like this. I'm always glad to receive newspaper people. You know, I have a special regard for the Morning Express. Its art editor has always been very flattering about my work. Uh, He sent you here, of course. Uh, Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, we're from the art department. Would you want anything, Mr. Walter? No, thank you, Mrs. Rice. You can go. Well, sit down, Miss Williams. Thank you. Casey. Thank you. Have a cigarette? Yes, yes, I'd like one. Mr. Casey? Much obliged. I will join you. Uh, I have a match right here, ready. Uh, here you are. Fine. Mr. Walter? Thanks. Uh, no, no, please. Do not light your own with that, Mr. Casey. Not uh, three on the match. <laughs> okay, since you're super <laughs> You see, I was born in Europe, in a little mountain village where people still believe in witchcraft, ghosts, and omens. I'm afraid my many years in this enlightened country have not completely eradicated my early teaching. I see. This is an enormous studio you have. Yes, we sculptors require a great deal of room. Yeah. See, this plaster model of your sleeping goddess must be over eight feet long. Mm-hmm. You certainly a masterpiece. I never saw the original. You are looking at the original now. I thought that was somewhere in Germany. Uh-huh. I must explain my method of working. 
First, like all sculptors, I make a wax or clay model of my conception. But when it is only roughly complete, I take from it a mold and then make a casting of plaster. On the plaster cast, I carve my finishing touches. Another mold is then taken for the final cast of metal. This model provided the final mold. Ah, it's a true original, then. Yes. It's now almost priceless. You see, its bronze replica was destroyed by a bomb oh. during the war. This really is worth plenty, then. Many consider it my greatest work. Hmm. I uh, understand the model who posed for it was your wife. Yes. She is now my ex-wife. We are divorced. Yeah? Well, if she looked like this sleeping goddess, she was certainly some woman. More like a goddess than a woman. He had the most wonderful hair in the world. But it was not of this world. It... Let us not talk of her. Okay. Hey. When did you make this plaster model, Mr. Bolton? Fourteen, fifteen years ago. Why? The head feels damp. Like fresh plaster. The head? That cannot be. Feel it. It is not damp. What do you say, Miss Williams? Feel stone dry to me, Casey. Huh? Yeah. Sure. Huh. Funny. When I first touched it, it felt cold and clammy. Like death. Death. Yeah. I see you don't have to go through your house to get in or out of this studio, Mr. Walter. There's a door leading directly outside. Yes. But... Will the story you and Miss Williams do about me concern this sort of thing? Well... <laughs> Hey, we must be getting to that story, yes. We uh, we want to hear about your most recent work, Mr. Balder. My current work is this group here. Oh, hey, that's a bigger hunk of plaster than the goddess. Huh? <laughs> that's what you call hunk of plaster will bring me $30,000 when cast in bronze. Wow, you're in a good business. What do you call this group? I call it the reunion. The reunion? The reunion? Yes. It is a symbolic conception. When did you cast that plaster? Why, just ten days ago. I set up my mold and worked all night. All Friday night? It was a Friday night. And you call it a reunion. The story you've just been telling me adds up to nothing more right now than a case for the Missing Persons Bureau. I'm a homicide cop. My hunch says this is a homicide case, Logan. Well, I have the same feeling, Captain. And so have I. This police department can't take the drastic action you propose on the strength of mere hunches and feelings. I haven't proposed any drastic action, Logan, until after a thorough routine missing person search has been made for Mrs. Walter. If she isn't found alive or dead within a reasonable length of time, well, I've told you where to look. Uh, you believe that she went to Walter's studio in response to his phone call through the door that leads there directly from outside, that he let her in, killed her, and, and hid her body in the mold he was setting up that night. Then he surrounded it with plaster. I think you'll find Mrs. Walter is in the model he so symbolically calls the reunion. <laughs> Hello. I ain't seen you two all day. What do you have to drink? Mm. Oh, give me a cup of coffee. Gee, Casey, you must be feeling low. What are your troubles? We can put them in three little words, Ethelbert. The Volker case. Say, why don't the cops quit stalling on that? Mm. They're never going to find Mrs. Walter till they look in the place you told them to, Casey. Today, they did look for her in the place I told them to. Uh-oh. Yes, I was wrong. Mrs. Bolter's body was not in the plaster model of reunion. 
In order to find that out, Logan's men had to bore holes in the model, and they broke it all up. Now Volt is going to sue the city for 30000 bucks. He claims it was worth, plus additional damages for I don't know how. Oh, his lawyers are drawing up a swell bill of goods. Sure, and the worst of it is he's pretty sure to win a suit. Logan will probably lose his job on account of it. He gave the order to bore into the statue on the strength of my hunch. Gee, gee the poor sap trusted me because... Well, by sheer dumb luck, I've given him a couple of good steers in the past. This time I let him down for fair and how. Oh, Casey, he doesn't blame you. Yeah, I know that. Look, don't don't ever tell the big dope I said this, but Logan's a pretty swell egg. Because Mrs. Walter's body wasn't hit in that statue, does it mean her husband's now in the clear? Sure does. Yeah? The only place he could have hidden her body was inside the freshly poured plaster of that reunion model. Wait a minute, Miss Williams. Couldn't he have hidden the body in a closet or someplace around the house and then sneaked it out later? No, Ethel. But Mrs. Royce and her cleaning women would have found it. Oh, of course not. And there's only one other model in the studio large enough to hide a human body in, and that was cast 15 years ago. Those plaster castings have a hollow core. Oh, so what, Casey? So we've even gotten the body inside the sleeping goddess. Walter would have had to cut a big hole in the old plaster and then afterward patch it up with fresh stuff, which would show you... The head of the sleeping goddess, it felt cold, damp, like fresh plaster that day. Didn't to me, Casey. And you said it didn't to you either after a minute. Yeah, that's so. It's funny, that's what started my hunch about Mrs. Walter being buried in plaster. When her husband said he'd cast that reunion piece on the night she... Annie. Hmm? I've doped the guy all wrong. He was smarter than I thought. What are you talking that about? That reunion model was only a planned decoy. He put her inside the, the sleeping goddess. Then he deliberately led you and me and the cops to believe her body was in the reunion model. And now that we've found she isn't there... Oh! Aha, uh-huh, you've got it. The city stands oh. to lose 30 grand plus for that mistake. No sane cop is going to take a chance like that again. Casey, if you're right... Yes, please, right, Ethelbert. Mr. Kurt Walter is going to get away with murder. Yeah. Say, Casey, what? why don't you sneak into that studio on a dark night, bust open that statue... And, and... what if I didn't find the body, Ethelbert? <laughs> Walter wouldn't bother to sue me. He just had me put away until about 1966. <laughs> uh... I got no more suggestions. I haven't even got a thought. Uh, wait a minute. I have. Yeah? What? And I'm going out to see Mrs. Royce, Walter's housekeeper, and ask her one confidential question. <laughs> Mr. Casey, since the night he made that plaster casting of his reunion group, Mr. Walter has never gone into his studio after dark. I see. Oh, I thought it rather strange. He used to do so much work in there at night. Mm. Well, thanks, Mrs. Royce. Why have you asked me about that? I've been thinking. Thinking. I was born in Europe, in a little mountain village where people still believe in witchcraft, ghosts, and omens. I've sometimes thought Kurt insane on the subject of Irene's hair. He couldn't reproduce it in bronze or marble. She had the most wonderful hair in the world, but it was not of this world. Yes, Mrs. Royce, I, I've just been thinking a kind of crazy thought. <laughs> scheme of yours is absolutely nuts. Call it a long shot, then, Logan, and play it with me, will you? If it happens to work, you save your job, the town saves at least 30 grand, I save my peace of mind, and, and we'll have the goods on a rotten killer. Okay, pal, I'll take a chance. Good evening, Mr. Walter. Good evening, Mr. Walter. It is not evening. It is almost midnight. Why have you insisted upon seeing me at this hour? Well, it's a kind of peculiar thing, Mr. Walter. Uh, Mr. Walter, uh, do you believe in dreams? Dreams? Yeah, dreams. Uh, Casey here had a very funny dream last night. Why should I? It concerns you, Mr. Walter. You see, I dreamed about Mrs. Walter. My ex-wife? Uh-huh. I dreamed... 
that she talked to me. She talked to you? Yes. She wasn't like a, a, a woman in my dream. She looked like that statue of yours she posed for, the sleeping goddess. She was the goddess. Only awake. Awake? Uh-huh. Uh, Casey, tell him the funny thing she said to you in your dream. Okay, Logan, I will. Mr. Walter, she said, I am the goddess awake because my life is in my statue. She said, her life was... Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And her hair was the shiny gold color I've heard Mrs. Walter had. So bright. It seemed to have light in her. Why, why have you come here to tell me about this? Because in my dream, she told me to come here. She told you? Just before midnight, she said. It's almost that now, Casey. we got to move fast. Yeah, come on, Walter. Into your studio. Into my studio. She told Casey to have you there at midnight. Clock striking 12 now. Come on, hurry. Oh, oh, let, let me go. How dare you? She wants you in the studio, Walter, where she's waiting for you. You're waiting for me? The goddess awake with shiny gold but, hair. Don't open that studio door. Don't push me inside. We're leaving you inside. <laughs> and in the dark... Open your door. Let me out. Light switch does not work. Open this door. Don't leave me alone here in the dark. Not alone, Walter. The goddess is awake in there. No. No, no, no. That golden light. That golden light. Rises. Moves this way. No, no, no. Don't come any closer. I'm sorry, Irina. I had to kill you. You ruled me. I've been your slave. The slave of your will. You so golden hair that marked my heart. I had to kill you and hide your body in that sleeping goddess. I had to make you sleep forever. Don't get any closer. Forgive me. I... We will enough, everything. All we need, Logan. Switch on your flashlight. I'm glad to have some light in here. You did a swell job, Annie. I was scared. You know that I was scared. I, I didn't like to see a ghost in the dark. You scared Mr. Kurt Walter a lot more, Miss Williams. He's fainted. He did? I figured all he needed was to see the shadow of a woman with a luminous wig rise from behind that plaster statue and walk slowly toward him. Casey, I'll never do this kind of job again. I'll never hey, do it again. Minute. You're trembling, kid. Now, what's the matter? I don't know. I, I don't know. I... You know what happened? Just at midnight, when you pushed Walter through the door and I went into my act, I, I, I got suddenly afraid. Afraid of Walter? No. No, afraid of her. Uh, Annie, what? Hey, Casey. Uh, what? Walter hasn't fainted. He's dead. Dead? Yeah. Dead. Hey, Miss Williams, you never got very close to him with that blonde wig of yours, did you? No. Uh, what is it, Robin? Look at this dead guy's neck, Casey. Uh, a single golden hair is wrapped around it, almost like a noose. A creep that rings down the curtain on the mystery playhouse for tonight. The reunion, a crime photographer story written by Alonzo Dean Cole, is based on the fictional character of Flash Gun Casey, created by George Holman Cox. Beth Cotsworth was heard as Casey, and Miss Leslie Woods played Anne. Until next time, please. Good night. Sleep tight. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service. <laughs>